Right, uh, question number one. I, th I think we've got one of the strongest squads in the division. Um, I'd like to know whether you think that, and given, assuming you do, we seem to be performing like one of the worst in the division. Uh, what's your view on that? Can we get up the table? Um, Sorry, guys. How do you get more out of this squad, basically? Um, so I don't think we should be where we should, okay, anyone does. It's a big squad. There's, there's 30 professionals. Um, so we, we've got a squad that's slightly too uh, top heavy right now. Um, and we've got a squad where we've got 10 players going out of contract in the summer. Um, which always throw up, throws up little issues. Um, there's uh, quite a bit of experience here as well in terms of some of the players that have, have been here and been in the Premier League years. Um, so that's something that we've got to look at and address in terms of making the squad more uh, refined, um, getting people that are going to be here under contract and contract, um, and having hungry players that um, their focus is all about us and the longer vision for us, the longer term for us next year. And, um, I can't really speak for anything before three weeks ago, um, but what I would say in the three weeks that I've had, um, if we look at the, the three games, two and a half of the three games, I've been happy with the performance of the players and the way that they've applied themselves and the work ethic of them. So that's what I can talk to you about at the moment, the honesty and the work ethic of them at the moment. Um, we need to score more goals and we need to cut out silly mistakes. I think that's evident to everybody here. I don't think there's any doubt I'm telling you anything I don't know there. Um, but as far as the squad uh, is concerned, it's about myself, David and the coaching staff uh, looking at it over a period of time um, and adapting it, tweaking it, whatever you want to call it, but making sure that it's a bit more balanced in terms of what I think a, a championship team to be promoted from this league needs to be. I don't know if that's such a question, but um, it's certainly well, it's a start. So if you want to f do a follow up on that one, yeah, I'm, no, well, I don't want to. No, no, but it, 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 it I think my, 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 the simple thing is, I mean, you, you probably know that because because we're going to be, you know, from what we've done in recent years, we've always been a team that punched above our weight, uh -huh. and for me, it feels like we're really punching below our weight right now, mm -hmm. given the players we've got. We've gone from being a small club in the Premier League mm -hmm. with players who who absolutely got that mentality of wanting to. They were playing for Wigan because nobody else would have them and they, they overachieved because of that. Mm -hmm. And now it feels like we've got a lot of players on bigger money than other teams and mm -hmm. it feels like they're going through the motions. Now again, it's been like that all season and obviously there's a managerial change as a result of that. But mm -hmm. you know, th this is that to me is a fundamental problem. We've got the players, we've just not they've just not got the, the right attitude right now. And and as you say, you know, you you, you need fighters because we're in a relegation battle right now, whether we like it or not. That's that's absolutely evident that we're we're down there and we're there on merit and we need to Realise that that's where we are at the moment. We're doing there, and um, this is a tough, uncompromising division. But you have to have people that are going to battle and fight and kick and scrap. Um, as I say, I can only judge on two and a half games of the three games. First half against Norwich, we were not good enough. But the other two and a half, the other two and a half games, um, they competed really well. And they dominated the opposition to an extent. So um, we're going to make sure that we try and put that out on the park. Um, that you will have a team that um, you will see sweat in the jersey, you'll see um, a fight in them. Um, you will see mistakes, but I think fans accept mistakes rather than accept lack of effort. You won't have a team under us that will lack effort. Um, but that will be something that we have to tweak going forward as in to the actual team. Mm -hmm. So um, we're talking about the squad at the moment. Our squad has to change. Yeah, so the squad has to change, personnel has to change, numbers have to change. Um, for the financial good of the football club, um, we'll make sure that, um, in line with, with Jonathan, um, that we do get the numbers right in terms of how much people are paid, um, how long the contracts are, and um, when we bring players in, that there is that value on them that we think they're up and coming. Um, or if we buy somebody at the peak of the their, their, their power is for damn good reason. Okay. Okay. Yeah, Paul. thanks, Mark. Um, you did touch on your four Malky goals. 
it was that's our our issue at the minute. I think. Um, I know your comments after Norwich said we dominated the second half, but we didn't look too much like scoring from from mm -hmm. what I yeah, yeah. my interpretation of it. Obviously, you're only three weeks into the job. Yeah. How would you imagine envisage that side of it changing? Our attacking play, two strikers is one that gets berated at us. Is there something that says we're only allowed one striker? No, no, not at all. It's <laughs> we, we need to have. Um, I think um, a striker is something that we're. I think some that everything look, everybody looks for a centre forward all the time. So and they're not exactly growing in trees, but that doesn't stop you looking and stop us keeping. Um, Challenging the players we've got to be better to go in, because um, again, in, the, in the, the short space that we've been here, um, it's what they do in the training ground that I then think can they make a difference on a Saturday. Are they up to what I think they're going to make a difference on a Saturday in the Championship game? Um, it's not always about what you see in the under twenty one team, or the, you know, the reserve team, or the want development team. Call it that. It's not what you see now. It's what I think in training. Uh, can they make a difference to um, what was out the week before? Right. Um, and it's it's a balance between trying to put your consistent players out on the pitch with trying to put something out on the pitch that is going to, at one end, score his goals and at the other end, keep goals out. It's a balance. Um, and that's what we've got to strike. Um, teams at the top of the division um, get that consistency of performance from players more than more often than the, the teams in the middle and the teams in the bottom. That's yeah. that's evident. We've got to make sure that we end up with players in the pitch that are consistent and if that takes tweaking it and changing it then that's what we'll continue to do till we find a group uh, that we think have got a consistent level of performance every week and have guys that are a threat um, and having the guys that miss the block at the other end. We talked before, you know, was mentioned about the fact we're in a, a scrappy relegation battle, and you, you, you sort of mentioned uh, about char needing characters within the squad. From what you've seen so far, and I appreciate it's only been a very short time. Do you think we've got the characters in in the? Well, we've missed James MacArthur mm -hmm. massively since we saw him. He was a really big player for us, and from my sitting on on, on the side, we've never he's nobody's filled his boots that drive, that passion that he has. Uh, but do you see something in the players that are still there that can, that can provide that, or will you be looking to bring somebody in in January? Well, they don't grow in trees anymore. Um, that type of player, they're few and far between. Um, it's just we could go on for hours on why that is the case in terms of society nowadays and youngsters coming through and the way that academies um, are throughout the country <coughs> and in general. Um, youngsters are quieter in general. Um, there isn't the, the natural leaders. Um, the people that were in the championship with the likes of the John Eustaces and the, the Sean Derrys um, to an extent and a younger version of that, James MacArthur um, but not as many of them uh, now and when a team does lose one of them it's quite evident because there's not two or three waiting to fill his boots um, so, but what you can do is you can keep instilling confidence in them which is what I'm, we're trying to do um, and be very positive with them and I want them to on a debrief on a Tuesday morning, because on a Tuesday morning we'll go in and we'll have, we'll have a, a half hour um, where we we'll sit down and I'll show them some clips from the Saturday, um, both positive and negative stuff, um, and I'll allow them to talk through it. The first week it was, I think it was quite they were quiet because they're thinking, are they going to be giving a bit of abuse here? But it's not my style in terms of that, it's about mistakes and talk it through to the point where they end up telling me what they should do next and what they should do next and I should cover him and he should have done that without any fear of anybody shouting at them or falling at each other or so it's it's about putting confidence in them, instilling a bit of confidence in them and the hope that that leadership starts to come out of people that maybe it didn't before. Um, you can't tell somebody to be a leader. Um, you can try and nurture it out of them and you can try and have uh, empower them and give them a bit of confidence um, with the way you talk to them, the way you are with them, the way you act with them all week, and that's something that um, that we well, I've certainly carried from my last two jobs, um, and it's something that David does well as well in terms of getting around players and giving them a bit of you know that wee bit of confidence and just go and enjoy, you know go and enjoy it, but go and actually show you stamp your authority on your position and on the guys running about you.
that's something you have to just keep working at. You hope that it comes out in some players. If not, then you go and try and get a player that, that is like that. But everybody's trying to get that player. Mm. Do you see this already happening? Is this starting to come to the fore with certain players? Have you noticed? Just <laughs> uh, leadership quality. I haven't too. No, there's two guys that I've seen it just starting to eke out, and and um, we'll keep. I'll keep it on it to everyone. Um, there's little drills you do. You can do in terms of, let's say you've got a seven v seven going on. What you do is you make it a silent session. So you say to everybody, no speaking, nobody talking, just play. That's really odd because then it's complete silence. You guys play five sides and stuff like that. Everybody <coughs> shoot out for the ball and all that. Nobody speaks. And then you pick one in either team and you go, you're going to. You're the only person that can talk in your team in direct traffic. You're the only person that can talk in your team in direct traffic. So you have you make people speak because if they don't, then it's complete silence. So you you're actually teasing stuff out of people that, that that don't find it normal. Do that on a regular basis, then they get a bit more comfortable in talking out in the training session. Um, and at the end of it, asking questions of them, just when we're sitting like this, the body, <coughs> and I'll sit and tell me in that session there. Um, what are the three things that you think would improve your team in that wee session there? Tell me one of them. And the guy's talking, got in it, but if you do it like this, then it comes out. But it's a, it's a, it's a, it's something you want to work at. It's not something that just naturally bang. He's a leader. He's a centre half. He's got a captain's armband on. He's six feet three, and he's going to direct traffic. <coughs> and he's a, he's a guy that sits in centre midfield and just you know as the as the general. They don't. We have a big character on the books at the moment, no, but he's, he's on loan at Huddersfield. Yes, that's not how I can do about that right now. No. <laughs> did, did you see a future for him coming back and perhaps bringing some of those qualities with him? Those, um, he's, he's a big character, isn't he? It, well, well, I, don't, I don't know, Grant, to be honest with you, but I only know of him, I don't know him, so I can't, yeah. I can't really speak on that. But what I'll say is that in January 1st he comes back and he's part of my squad, absolutely. We've got uh, a player who... Um, for one reason or another, um, things haven't worked out in the last year or so. Um, um, but there's certainly qualities there, or there's been qualities there in the past that I admired uh, at Norwich. Um, you know, having, having friends at that club and people around about that club and how well he did there for a couple of years. Um, so that being the case, then Grant will come back in January, um, and he'll he'll come back in the squad again. So um, it's it's good to have another another experienced player back and it's actually our, our guy um, as I say it was, it was disappointing that he, he was uh, out there till January the 1st but that's life you get on that but he's still be coming back I like Grant uh, not in Forest so I've spoken to him I guess I don't know what he, he, he's come bring to the dressing room as well so I'm fully aware Do you have an idea um, about our main strikers are going to be at the moment so we've got about five strikers haven't we in front playing one up front so, one of you might be best to, to kind of find your strikers, one or two, and just keep on playing them. It's, it, again, it's about what I see in training. If I don't see enough in training, they don't play. Uh, or if I see something that I think, yeah, he can affect the thing, or he can affect the team more than him, then, then he'll play. It's, 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 not, um, it's not anything more deep than that. If they do well, and I, or I think that they can handle um, championship standard, um, from the start, they do. Um, you know, at the moment, it's Marco. Marco's put he puts an, an awful lot of work in, as you see in games. Um, is, is he getting the box enough at the moment? No, but that's something we're working on with him. Um, but the other guys, it's about waiting your turn and making sure that when you do train, you look really good. Simple as that. Um, Audio picked up a little ankle knock. Uh, last week, which is is fine again, so he's he's back during the last day or two. Um, Martin Wycombe's got a shoulder problem at the moment, um, which has kept him out. Um, and Andy Delors, the last week or so, has uh, impressed me much more, so um, than he did in the first week or two. So um, he scored two in the development game, um, and he will come into contention for the weekend because of that. Yeah, all I'm after is like, what is the short term plan for the rest of the season, and then where do you see us building on um, come next season? All right, I'll, I'll do the football side of that, and maybe John can touch on the business side. But, but certainly, uh, the very first thing is to get out that bottom three, 
and then try and get up the league as, as best we can. Simple as that this season. Um, there is 10 out of contract then, come the summer. That's a lot of people to have out of contract in a, in a, a football club. Um, but it's something that uh, is a challenge that I've met before in my last club where we started with 10 players. Um, at that point then I find that quite exciting because we've got a chance to actually mould something here with um, the ability in terms of you know, having nearly a clean slate in terms of a, a group um, to build on again and bring bring players into the, cl the club um, and then basically really kick on. We don't want to be in the, the championship any more than you guys do, um, but it's a tough, tough division and we've got to make sure that we have the, all the qualities that we need to actually go and uh, attack um, promotion then. So that's in the first three weeks and the, the conversations that I had with Mr Whelan and David Sharp and Jonathan. Um, that's the conversations that we've had. So it's about trying to make sure that we're going to try to get back to the Premier League ASAP, but um, without being um, silly about it and thinking, oh, well, we're in the bottom three, but we're going to make the top two. It's going to happen. Well, you've got to be realistic about that as well as where we are right now. So, I think Jonathan can touch on the business side. For what was the question? The long term now, from <coughs> obviously. Championship. Vision. Um, where, where do you see us long-term vision? Well, we didn't see us being second to bottom of the championship at this time, that's for sure. And uh, as a club, we're, we're you know we're very disappointed in where we are. And that's why we've had a change of manager. Um, with the squad that we've got, with the players that we've got, as Jimmy says, we we expect to be much higher up the division. But no one's got a divine right to be there. And it's as you've seen in this division, every single game is a challenge, and there's no guarantee of three points. Um, off the field, we've we've got planned permission for the new training ground uh, at Channel Richard, which we're going to start building as soon as uh, we've sorted out the um, uh, mitigation plan for the ecological problems, which is moving uh, a number of uh, great crested newts from the golf course to a different part of the golf course, um, creating ponds, uh, sorting out the bats, those kind of things we have to sort out um, as part of the planning permission. Uh, and then we start building a, a brand new training ground and academy, uh, something like 10 grass pitches, an indoor football pitch, uh, uh, offices, classrooms, all the things that you would need as a Premier, Premier League club and, uh, and also a, a Category 1 academy. So that will be hopefully in place in two years' time. That of course costs a lot of money. Um, we'll need investment to do that from, from the chairman, uh, which he, he's still very supportive of this football club and he wants the football club to be back where it belongs, back in the Premier League and back in uh, as a Category 1 academy. So that's that's the main thing that we are building to make sure that the infrastructure is there for the football club to develop so that when we do get to the Premier League we can sustain that. Because there's no guarantee that we, you know if we do get there we, we won't get relegated again but we've got to make sure that we are competing on a level playing field with, with all the other clubs <coughs> around us. Um, at the moment, it's it's difficult, but you know, football is all about ups and downs. We've had some great years over the last few years as supporters. We've had fantastic last 15 years. Sometimes, you know, you end up at, at the lower end of the table. Um, that's football. We've got to deal with it. We've got to make sure that we're better than we have been, uh, and that's where, you know, making sure that we've got the best manager in place that that, that we that we can attract, um, and making sure that. We've got the best players in place. Um, we spent over £10 million in the summer uh, to attract players to this football club. And sometimes it doesn't happen overnight. Sometimes you need a bedding in period for those players. We've had a lot of changes since we won the FA Cup in 2013. A lot of players have moved on. A lot of players have come in. We've had three managers. All that is doesn't help the stability of the football club. And that's what we want to get back. We want to get back to a, 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 you know where we can plan long term for the future. Because when new managers come in, they bring their own players in. They want to. They've got different styles, and that sometimes causes us to, you know, to, to hit choppy waters, which we've had recently. Um, but you know, we, we, what's what's gone is gone. We're looking to the future now. In the short term, we have to get out of the, the relegation zone. Long term, we, we want to be back in the Premier League. I think we touched on them just in terms of the the training ground and the academy. Um, we have to have a structure here that allows us to compete with Blackburn, 
and Burnley and Bolton. Not all kids um, are able to go to Man, U, Man, United, uh, Man City, Man United, Liverpool, Everton. There's too many kids for too few places. So, fair enough, that lot will go. The next lot, we need to be <coughs> able to compete with the clubs that I've just talked to you about in that area who are in our division. Um, and we need facilities for that, and we need um, a certain standard of coaches for that, for us to bring through more kids than we do. So um, that is absolutely something that we're all here sitting tonight and we're all talking about the first team, and that's absolutely right, and it's, it's where everything should be. But the fundamentals underneath that, the building blocks of where the club can be, we've got a stadium, two years' time there'll be a, there'll be a training ground sitting there. We'll get into that training ground, we need to step into that training ground, we're an academy. That are pretty, it doesn't, you don't just do that and click your fingers and the academy happens. So there's some good people being put in place over the last um, year that have started making sure that the coaches are actually being vetted, that the coaches are actually being measured. Are they good enough? Um, that the, the different age groups, have we got enough kids coming through those age groups? Are we scouting to make sure the kids are coming through those age groups? It's not sexy, right? But it is eventually when the next Leighton Baines comes through and it's Callum McManaman comes through. That is sexy then. Um, so it's it's about having a bit of belief and a bit of a long term vision as well, as far as that's concerned. So that um, we have got a structure at the club that you can be proud of, and you see, because there's nothing better, I think, in a fan when a fan sees one of their own coming on with a first team jersey on for the first time, and then and growing through that team that you've all seen with probably Leighton Baines and to an extent Callum. You go. The, you give them more time as well. You, you, you'll not shout at them as readily as you will um, someone else or me. Um, and, and that is something that you've got to hold on to as well. So that's a really important thing, I think, in terms of the future of the club. I think we've just seen the green shoots of what we've done over the last four years, the coaches and the players that we're attracting, the way we're developing players. If you look at the under-18s now, I think they've won, they won nine on the trot. I think they've, lo they've lost one of the last 13. Um, they're scoring goals and there's probably three or four players in there that have a real chance of making it, if not more. Uh, and, and that's that's a product of, of four years' work without the facilities, but making sure we've got the right coaches uh, and doing the right things with them. So that side of things is looking very healthy indeed. Uh, Jason. Hello. <coughs> Following on from what Simon was saying, um, the FA Cup this year, we were using that to blood play as well. Are you going to Treat it as a no, I'm going to treat it way of getting the confidence up and no, we're going to try and win uh, as many games as we can. Um, We've not lost a game for two years in the FA Cup. Good, no pressure. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> we definitely don't want to do one. We definitely don't want to do <laughs> <laughs> No, I get that. Um, not the FA Cup is a terrific competition. It really is, and it's. Uh, I, I was at the final. I think I said that a couple of weeks ago. I was at it, and it was. For a, 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 a person that was just there watching the neutral, watching that team, it was a fantastic occasion to watch, and I was delighted for Wigan and Athletic on the day. And, and but personally, um, the magic of the FA Cup as a player, I find it it was something that was like coming down to England to play in the FA Cup. I remember my first ever game in the FA Cup at Shelby at Sheffield Wednesday, and um, just it was an excitement that from what I watched as a kid. On television, I was actually going to actually play in it, and it was it was the third round, but it didn't really matter. Um, I got to the semi-finals. We got the semi-finals against Man United um, at Villa Park. Um, David's probably he's done way more than me in terms of the FA Cup, but there is a, a pride to that, uh, and we'll make we'll make sure we try and get as far as we can in the FA Cup. No, absolutely. Did you play in the final? Did no, you? no, I did not. Well, semi uh, semi-final. Who was that against again? It was uh, Everton. Spurs yeah. Island. We won it, did you know? <laughs> <laughs> well, you did, it was, it was the gaffers just saying that, you know, I think everybody lost a uh, last round jumping up and down in, in the living room when Blythe scored, you know, it was just fantastic. Mm -hmm. Absolutely brilliant, man. Uh, Jimmy? Um, I, I suppose probably a question you least expect from me, but in terms of formation and style and tactics, mm -hmm. I don't think we've seen a big difference so far. I think you said, you you know, give me a few weeks to sort things out, but mm -hmm. I suppose how much influence has, has what, you know, Eric Black and Graham Barrow had, and, and ultimately what, what sort of formation and style do you do you define yourself as, as seeing as playing? How, how do you want us to set up? Well, there won't, be a, there won't be a specific, we will always play that, 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 that isn't going to happen. Mm -hmm. Where we will tailor it to 
every game of play um, and what opposition in front of us and how we decide that we're going to um, play against their their team um, where we find that they've got flaws um, so there's a lot of work goes into that and that's how we'll define how we play you've also got to cut your cloth with what you've got so um, at no point in saying we're going to play that way and then you don't have players that can play that way so it, it's, a, it's a combination of both it's getting a mix and a balance between the team that's going to go on the pitch um, the consistency of those players and then what system you play to think that you're going to beat the opposition um, but what they are going to be they're going to be athletic um, we're going to be able to press teams I want us to press teams and have the ability to press teams um, I want workers I want people that can um, make sure that when we don't have the ball we get behind it when we have got the ball we've got footballers on the pitch that have got the ability to switch the ball quickly from side to side to maybe allow the likes of Cal McManaman and at times James at times Andy Taylor and Sean Maloney to get to wide areas so that we can get <coughs> two V1s in these wide areas um, you have to have plan B you have to have a plan B if you're going to do anything in this league um, and that being the case you need to have different players for different um, you know, positions in terms of height, strength um, if you're going to get into the final area and be crossing balls as opposed to um, feeding balls through so it's a mix um, of something I did we did it at Cardiff in terms of having a the second year having a blend that allowed us to win different ways uh, most weeks um, and if a team put up a certain defence against you you were able to play in a different fashion against them that day so it's about making sure that you've, you've got to win and it's making sure that you try uh, and get that combination right and have a, have a balance of a team that can do that but also be able to defend be able to grind out wins horrible wins away at whatever it may be 1-0 on a wet night and a Tuesday night um, but I also have some players I mean the way we train we train um, what I would say is a lot of the training is based on short periods um, but real high intensity so um, David will put on a session this morning where there's um, I mean, a big area that will be an 8v8 and he'll have certain conditions rules attached to it um, but it'll be four minutes but it'll be massively high intensity and it's all about keeping the ball it's about shifting the ball quickly so they have to be they have to a demand on them that they have to be comfortable on the ball more and more and more the teams have to be comfortable on the ball the players are on the pitch so shift it quickly a high intensity for four minutes then it'll be off minute break to get your recovery and straight back in there for four minutes again do that four times four minutes four minutes four minutes four minutes with one minute in between that's real high intensity and, and they've only worked for 16 minutes there but at that point they know they're worked three minutes walk over there to another coach and he'll take the exact same a different possession but he'll do the exact same terms of the numbers over there four times four minutes per minute recovery a lack of recovery means that that's what gets the work rate in and I mean that's what and so at the end of the day they've done 32 minutes worth of work and you think well that's nothing well it, when it's when it's frantic and there's people closing each other down really hard then that's the, that's what we're trying to instill in them so they're, they're the things that define me in terms of the, the organisation they want it to be as organised as possible they have to be disciplined in terms of when I ask them to do jobs they have to remember them and they have to week after week be ready to do that job if I want you back in when the ball's over there you'd be in if I want you out there when the ball's going to the right back and I want you to shut him down and be in his face you'd be there so that's the discipline side of it the organisational side of it is down to myself and Eric Black and Graham Barrow and David in terms of tactically how we set the team up and the team we play against the strengths and weaknesses of the teams um, and I want them athletic so that's a fair kind of uh, um, I suppose remit of my ethos of how a team should actually play in this division my team how I want my teams to play not so much in this division actually because we we're only too different from that when, when we went into the Premier League I think that's it as well. I think we'd all take a few scrappy one nil wins given the way we started the that's season. The problem, yeah. If that's the way you know, that's the there's, there's different ways of playing football and people will moan if you if you don't change it and you stick to one style, people will moan if you're always changing mm -hmm. it. So you can't you can't win, but I think if we do win games then people won't care. Uh, if they do they're ungrateful. Next play. When uh, he's addressing the players he, he, he'll, he'll put them if it's one of the things we highlight that it, we can't just keep if it's Passing, passing, and we're going nowhere. We're like, okay, we need to pick the tempo up. We need to maybe spin it in, close me in, get in into the areas, different ways of winning a football match, and we've got to find that quickly. Okay. So who's impressed you since you joined? Jonathan. 
<laughs> Far from me. <laughs> Players wise? Yes. Their attitude, their whole attitude, there's there's been nobody. Fantastic. Um the one of the one of the you don't really know you come into the dressing room and you have them for a couple of days and then you, you're around them and you see them and you look at them and you watch how they act and you watch how they are after training and there's no poison. That's a, no, that's a word that's, that's, that's is that strange? Yes it is. But there's no poison in the dressing room, which I'm really delighted about. There's nobody there who there's a bitterness to them. Um, and that can happen. And it's sometimes it's not their fault, it's just the way it, their career has gone at a football club at a certain time, or the way they're treated, or the way they're going out of contract, whatever it may be. Um, but I don't have any, um, I don't have any in the dressing room that I'm phone I'm going up to see Jonathan and saying he needs to go today. You need to somehow get rid of him today. That is not the case with this group of players. Um, they're all trying their best. They're all trying hard, working hard. So that's that's been good um, on the whole lot of them. Um, I've not got my favourite shit. <laughs> There's obviously some talent there. There's, there's some talented individuals, and there's two or three of the young kids of um, a real good attitude. And you know, and um, Callum and uh, Rob Kierman and James McLean and um, and Adam Forshaw, real good young talents coming through. James Tavernay as well. These these young guys that are, that are real fresh and hungry and whatever. But there's the the ones at the flip end where the McCanns and and Watson who have been out for a long time. Delighted to see them coming back, absolutely, because they're two terrific professionals. Um, and obviously, we've not seen you know Sean the last week or two because unfortunately he's had a he's had a bug, a sickness bug, where I, I thought he was terrific against Middlesbrough, and I know that um, he knows that he's got a lot more to give to Wigan Athletic than he's uh, been possibly than he's, he's shown <coughs> at international level, um, and that's about making sure that we get that out of him. But um, terrific talent. When you took over Watford, uh, it was a similar position uh, that we're in at the moment. Is that something that you can fall back on your experience of getting them into trouble? Yeah, I think it's it's 18 years of more of, of being involved in this league and knowing it at like the back of my hand, both in terms of a player, a coach, and the manager. So um, I absolutely have been in situations where uh, we need to dig deep to win games over over a period of time. Um, to get us a, a bit more stable, um, and I think that was something that absolutely was was um, was something we had to do. What we did at the time, what we had was a we had a group there where um, it was it was bringing through academy kids, it was finding lower league diamonds, and it was um, had trying to find the odd X factor loan player. That was what the remit was there, um, while the owner was trying to sell the club, and. The director of football was told to bring in two million pounds a year, and I was told to keep the team in the division. Good luck with all those three. But yeah, you know, it's about good people, um, all trying their, their best for the club and trying to do the same thing. So that was the remit there. Um, what I found similar to Watford here is the the, the, the office staff and, and a lot of the, the, the backroom staff. Um, there's a real uh, caring about the football club. Um, people having three hats on and doing three jobs at once with a, a brush tied to the bum as well and that's great because with a small staff it's highlighted quickly if you're rubbish at what you do so invariably small staffs are all quite good because they've all they work tightly they work closely and they're all doing for the best of the football club um, that's the thing I like about the club here uh, that, that I noticed right away um, but also the team in the pitch we've got to make sure again that that, that team come together as a group and when you can get staff, players, directors and fans all kind of doing that together and that's a gradual process because it's a trust thing between everyone um, but if everybody's doing it for the greater good of um, Wigan Athletic eventually it comes and it's, it's you know, quick fix, this is about um, small steps here it's about yeah. making sure that we, we get the structure right, we get we tweak the team and we gradually bring players in and gradually players um, move on that maybe aren't playing as much as they, they and, and it's not their fault but they'll move on and you gradually get a squad together that's lean and hungry um, and, and boys that you would really want in the trenches with you. Um, you touched on it a bit with the young players coming through. Uh, what was the future lies for Tim Chow and Fraser Fire? Because um, both of them probably played more minutes than anyone else in pre-season. 
but um, Tim Charles hasn't played since. Um, again, it's well, Fraser's had a bad injury, um, but he's got to come back and impress me, just like everyone else. Um, Tim, again, uh, Joe Parkinson's got a, 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 I've been impressed with what I've seen there with Joe and his team at the moment and the work ethic of him and he's, the way he wants to have his team playing. Um, and I take my, I'll, I'll watch it, and I say, oh, David will go and watch it, but I take my recommendations from him as to when to push those boys into my training sessions. Because to go from 18 training sessions, and any, any of you guys have stood up on the fence and stuff and watch, you look at the 18s and the intensity of how the 18s train, and then how it just lifts to the 21s, and then how at the first team level it's on a different level altogether, and how they, how they have to handle training. So over a period of time we'll make sure that, that the intensity of their sessions just tweak and tweak and tweak, but you're going from sometimes underdeveloped boys at 16 to full-flown men at 25, 26, hardened men who, and they've got to be ready for that jump and that jump again, otherwise it can really damage them. They go into a situation and they lose all confidence because they just can't handle the situation on a regular basis. So it's about dipping boys in and out and then if I feel they're ready and they can handle it, then they stay involved in the training sessions. Once they train with me for a period of time, then can they handle going into a game? Um, I'm not scared to do that. I'm not scared to do it at all. At Watford, it was one of the things, that, one of the strengths that we did. Um, blood and we blooded two 16-year-olds who um, are actually now part of Watford's first team. And Sean, a boy called Sean Maloney and a boy called um, uh, Joe Murray. Sean Murray. Sean Murray. So Sean, Tommy. Yeah, sorry. Sorry. Sean Murray and um, Tommy Hoban, two young kids at 16 with blooded that are now part of the first team squad. Um, at Cardiff, uh, there's a couple of companies there, Declan John and, and Joe Rawls, two kids that we looked at and they're now part of the football. The boy Declan John's an international footballer two years later. So I think if, if kids come through, um, I don't have any fear of throwing them in. Absolutely not. But it has to be, they have to be. I'm not expected to go in and hit the ground on and just fly, but I'm expected to come in and not be damaged by the experience. So, but you can bet your bottom dollar that the youngsters, if good enough, will absolutely be part of the squad going forward. So Melky, since arriving at the club, what would you say, what would you say are the biggest changes that you've made? And are there any more big changes coming, would you say? Um, the biggest changes I've made, I can only speak about what we've done since we come in, I can't really talk about what, what, what was before. Um, what I want is a, um, a training ground where people want to come into work um, and are happy uh, to come into work every day um, and there's a decent ambience about the place. When we go out to train, that's when the, 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 the concentration level goes up uh, and the demands of me then comes upon them. After that I want to be nice and relaxed again at the training ground. Um, so I want what I want is a culture, an environment that the, there's a park your ego at the front door, come in, join in, be together, work together, work as a team, and and start to, to um, feel that you're part of something. Um, as I say, that's, that's how that's how myself and David have worked before. It's the best way I think that an organisation flourishes if everybody number one feels part of it, uh, and number two. Um, just allows theirself um, to, to go with the flow and, and be part of something and share um, and help each other with the load. So that's that's really what I would say that um, is what in the first two or three weeks we've done. With, um, you know, there's, there's good people at the training ground that have been constantly trying to make the improve the um, just improve things at the training ground year on year. The, the grounds staff take great care in their pitches. Um, Ed is doing a terrific job in terms of this sort of thing that you're seeing now. I'm, I'm a big believer in this and there'll be quotes at the training ground going up ev everywhere and I want players to be looking at pictures of first team players and um, the, the chance to put that jersey on um, to their, their things. Um, Matt Jackson's again trying to make improve the building, improve the place to make sure it's somewhere that we're proud to come to work until we moved in for two years time. Um, it's just about trying to do, it's, we call it best practice, it's, it's going and borrowing best practice from organisations, it doesn't always take money sometimes, it just takes a little bit of thought and a little bit of hard work in terms of thinking can we do a wee bit better with that, a little bit better with that, um, can our 
medical team can they bring in consultants that can just help there or a, a yoga teacher can just tweak something there and help players there I'm a great believer in, in uh, hiring just consultants that come in in their own little field if they can help the players in any way did you say a yoga teacher? Mm -hmm. okay. yeah um, you know yoga is um, absolutely something that um, I think is uh, can, it can benefit footballers um, yoga um, chiropractors, osteopaths, hydrotherapy uh, work, um, boxing coaches, um, sprint coaches. These are all people that, um, if the player goes and does little bits of all these, makes the player better. No matter what, it, it makes the player better. And it's something that we took from our last couple of clubs that we uh, we take in here. I'm fortunate that Richard Collins, the head of medical, is already here. Who was with me for six years. It's just a, a complete bit of luck that that was the case, but. Um, someone that has got a um, great work ethic and someone that um, I'm in tune with in terms of how we train players, how we make players better, fitter, stronger. Uh, I'm going on to goalkeeping. Um, Sheffield Wednesday, for example, Scott Carson came under a bit of abuse from the terraces for his distribution um, out there. So is now we've got Ali back. Is it just Scott is our number one and that's what we're going with, or is there a constant fight for...? No, there's absolutely a constant fight. Um, you know, Lee Nichols was younger, obviously. Scott's an experienced goalkeeper. Um, Ali comes back, Ali's an experienced goalkeeper, so it'll be two of them fighting for the jersey. Unfortunately, <coughs> Ali goes to the... Uh, I don't know what it's actually called, but there's a... Asian goal, Cup. The Asian, Asian Cup, Asian. which is out in Australia in January, unfortunately. So there's another little stop-start bit going on there. Um, so <coughs> that doesn't lend itself to him getting into goals just now um, and I think it's, it's been a year, you know, I think goalkeepers are always under scrutiny but they're, they're, they're dead balls and um, but it's got, a, it's got a good experienced goalkeeper who hasn't shown me anything in the, the first few weeks to, to show me anything otherwise than that but it's good to have a, that to have Ali back as well because he's a he's a, he's a terrific boy actually I had just a good conversation with him a couple of days ago we sat into that a chat for a little while, um, a terrific lad, but also a good goal, good goalkeeper, as you know. So to have two of them vying is terrific. I had it at Gardner with um, Heaton and um, and Marshall, who vied for the position, um, and and Heaton ended up playing in the cup all the way through to the final. Heaton's now at Burnley, doing really well at Burnley, and, and Marshall's done very well at, at Gardner. So to have two goalkeepers constantly pushing each other in a friendly sort of way. Um, is what you want. You want you want that for every position in the team. Um, it's not always the case, but we'll get there. We'll get there at that point. We'll, we will get there. What sorts of pre-match rituals do you have? And um, also, well, in that, with that as well, why have you put the dog out back on the left? Uh, I I'm pretty. Uh, I pretty do much the same things. I got up in the morning, uh, a bit of breakfast, relax in the morning, but get in here for about uh, half eleven. Um, and uh, the coaches come in about 12 o'clock and go in there and have a bacon roll and a cup of tea into the little manager's room across the way there. Uh, by that point, um, everything's done in terms of the, the organisational things and the, the game plan and um, the slides and uh, what have you. So um, I'll have my kind of uh, watch and my match shoes set out. I've got match shoes um, so, because it, it's hell of a mucky on the side of the pitch. So. Um, he'll have my, the kit man of my match shoes out there um, and all ready for us coming in here um, by 1 o'clock, 1.15 the boys are milling about coming in by 1.30 they're all sitting down with the door locked ready for me to come in and have my little team talk with them where there'll be 4 or 5 key points um, on the opposition 4 or 5 key points on us and 4 or 5 key points in the transition of the game and the set pieces will be shown as well and that's the final part of it because on the Friday and on the Thursday have been drip fed stuff on how we're going to do things so the final little part on game day you don't really want them to have to take too much info and all you do is reaffirming things you want <coughs> to let them get into their pre-match routine yeah, that's what it's about. It's, about it's not so much rituals it's routines and if you get a little routine um, and then sometimes if something goes wrong um, it's easier to fix because you've already got the routine set up um, so that's uh, it's pretty, pretty uh, just normal, pretty calm and relaxed. As, as I say, there's uh, y what you want the, the 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 place to be is the kind of swan, the swan on the on the the water, 
and it's nice and calm and everything's gliding but underneath it's furious with it's legs and that's what we've got with, with the good people and the good staff that are here on match day furiously working about to hope that it just in here it's nice and calm and when they go out there at three o'clock then there's a and they have the ability to just go and do what they do. Um, at work sometimes it doesn't but over a I'm, I'm a firm believer in in fine tuning it but having your routine, um, having a structure during the week that we we, we put everything into and having a structure on, uh, on match day. Uh going back to the left, um it's something I, I quite like that side. Uh, I don't particularly like the, the linesman running in front of me like that all the time. Um, I think, uh, as far as I'm aware, the dugouts were on that side for a long number of years here. Um, so a combination of it being something that I wanted and something that the, the club were comfortable with doing again, um, Mr Jackson didn't have any, any objection to me doing it. Um. Yeah, Malky, what, what kind of appealed to you about taking the job and, and how did it come about? Were you approached or did the club approach you? It seemed it happened quite quickly after the initial, you know, the, the press was saying there's going to be a short list and a, a selection process. Sure. It seemed to be Monday and then by Tuesday, Wednesday, you were appointed. So right. how did it um, all transpire? What, what appealed to me, um, having known the club for a period of years, playing against them and, and the history attached to the last 10 years, I suppose, um, Mr. Leland, that, that appealed to me to work with him. Um, I had a look at the squad and, and thought, yep, there's something there to work with. Um, a combination of all that um, made me think, yeah, this is absolutely something I would like to do. Um, in terms of the process, that's that's not something I, I, I know about really. That's something I suppose that he's, he's going to ask Jonathan about. Um, but um, as far as, as I was concerned, uh, when it came up, um, it was a kind of um, a conversation, someone uh, from a you know, third party came to me and said, would you be interested? So uh, my representative got in touch um, with, with Wigan um, and we, we managed to set up a, a meeting that the, the club wanted and I wanted and had a good chat, good conversation and uh, over a couple of hours um, with Jonathan and Mr Whelan and David Sharp um, and then like anything I, I left it at that and just you wait and see. So. I was very proud when I got the call, very, very proud to get the call and, and say that you, you're going to be a new manager of Wigan Athletic. It was, it was something that, as I said, when my first day out here, that, that no matter what, that would mean a lot to me forever. And just second time David Sharps had mentioned, can I just ask, probably more for Jonathan, what's his, his I guess it's a, I guess it's a, an emerging role at the club. Yeah, I think that's fair to say. Yeah, he's, um, <coughs> obviously he's Mr Whelan's grandson. Um, Mr. Wyden's 78 now. He, you know, he spends quite a bit of time in, in Barbados. So he's um, is that David Sharp or David Wyden? <laughs> David Wyden. <laughs> and um, um, David wants David Sharp wants to get involved in the club. He, he's learning about the football club, how it works. He spends a lot of time with me, a lot of time with with Malky. Um and it shows that the commitment that the family have got, that you know, that that stretches out into the future. Um, he, he's young, but he, he knows Wigan Athletic well. Um, he's, he's, he's a Wiganer, and uh, it's uh, I think it's good for the football club, and you know, good for the stability of the football club that we've got a succession plan there. Um, and uh, I think the more he gets involved, the better, really, because it, it, it's you know, it's good. And it aids lines of communication as well, because it's uh, it helps us to 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 make quick decisions. I don't think there's enough emphasis can be put on that in terms of you've got um, people that are local and passionate about the football club and have the ability to sustain the football club. They're, they're becoming few and far between in this country and that's something that's um, the fact that there is a succession plan uh, in terms of um, a line of communication between grandfather and grandson and chief executive and down then down to manager. Um, that again isn't everywhere, but um, David's very passionate about the club, don't underestimate that, very passionate about the football club going forward and, uh, and wants the best for it and that can only be good for us. Mm-hmm. What are your thoughts ahead of January? I know Paul Jewell once said he'd put a brick through the transfer window if he could. Um, 
just January's an interesting market because it's never a pool of players that are uh, or there's never a big pool of players in January. Big pools in the summer, obviously. Um, you you always want to try and pull a bit of freshness out in January and go and try and bring players in. Sometimes um, you've got to be very cautious in terms of why players have been allowed to leave football clubs. Is it just um, sometimes you get lucky because there's just too many players at a club and you can manage to to uh, price someone out of somewhere that's just not getting a game because there's a good quality in there and, and he's still good quality. Or is it because um, uh, they've done enough for him, he's done enough for them, and it's not quite working at the end of the day, and, and you may be um, buying someone else's rubbish, so to speak, yeah. in the most respectful terms? Um, is it a youngster? Um, if, it, if it is a youngster, is he is he ready for the championship? And that's something you've got to be massively cautious about. Um, is it a first time loan or is it a second time loan? If it's a um, at Watford, we took um, Tom Cleverley. He had been to Leicester in the division below. He then came to Watford in our division. He then came to Wigan Athletic in the Premier League, and then he was brought in by Fergie in his fourth year. Um, that was a plan, obviously, he had for him because they thought he was a talent, which he is. Um, so, can you go and get a, a little X Factor diamond somewhere? Um, but again, um, there are a lot of people queuing up for them as well, um, and something that's it's not always down to. Uh, to, to money or to how quickly you get in, it's down to relationships as well. But it's it's certainly something we will be um, working hard on to try and bring uh, a, a couple in, in January and try and maybe, but there'll be a couple of half to try and move on as well in terms of their careers getting moved. As I said, he touched on it, 30 people is too big a squad uh, and there's, there's a few of them that really need to go and play football and get their career going and they know that as well. Um, so it's a balance between bringing in uh, and, and guys going. Just, is there any areas you think him I'd like to strengthen that area, or are we a little bit early yet for you to? No, I think I, I, I think we've got to just try and see if we can get uh, players in that are as good as what we've got, or or slightly better. That's really the remit. But if you can in, in any area, if we can find someone that's um, you know we think can actually strengthen the team, then we'll do that. Whether that be defence, midfield, or attack, but you know obviously in terms of. Um, you know, scoring goals, you want somebody that's, that's got the ability to do that. Defensively, you want somebody that's, that's got the ability to actually be uh, a strong, consistent defender as well. I was just wondering, how important is it to you to have people like David alongside you, people that you've known in the past? I mean, did you come as a package? And as you mentioned, there's somebody else on the coaching set up here that you already know. And did you, did you know where it lacked? And is that something, as a manager, you need these people around? Because our last manager mm -hmm. sort of didn't have his own coaches that he, who we brought with him. You know, were you not initially? Not initially, yeah. Mm. Where you have? Um, yeah, I I do uh, think it's important to have uh, strong staff, to have good staff with you. So the, and, and keep improving the, the quality of, of the staff at your football club um, and keep pushing people, and if people fall by the wayside, fine. But to have fundamentally um, people that you think have real good quality and people you trust. It's huge, absolutely huge. So David's, uh, I've been fortunate enough to work with him for um, what, five or six years now. Um, so he came in. So, so what, how would you describe your relationship? Is it like a cuff tail attack thing? It's like my, my uncle. You know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no. Um, I can see the resemblance. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I, I, I was fortunate enough that, that David um, was allowed to come in with me here. Um, we had. Uh, two very good coaches that, that weren't going to be leaving the football club, which I was delighted about because um, Graham Barrows uh, got a wealth of experience about everything Wigan uh, and in terms of the town, the, the, the club, everything about the, the whole uh, squad and the staff. So um, delighted to get his experience. Uh, I was also glad to work with Eric again because Eric was my one of my coaches at Celtic a long, long time ago, and I know the qualities of him. So. Um, I was fortunate that um, I was I was inheriting two good men in terms of that was concerned. Mike Pollitt's uh, another one who's, who's just starting off in the ladder in terms of going into coaching, goalkeeping coaching, but um, he's another man who's very, very experienced as far as a goalkeeper's concerned and, uh, and has, has got a, a good character about him. So these, these guys were, um, it was terrific that I actually was able to uh, go in and, and um, have the ability to, to go in and work with them. 
um, fortunate enough to, as I said to you before, to work with Richard Collins, head of medical for, for the last five or six years. So um, the importance of that side of it is huge. Um, Matt Jackson's another one who's uh, the train ground operations manager and, and who's someone I know very well from my time playing with him at, at Norwich. So to be able to come in and, and immediately feel uh, comfort with, with people um, is, is key. It really is. It's something that's important as far as how we work. Like I'm talking about that. It's a probably the uh, biggest thing that might have helped uh, our health map as well is that the manager has a, a million or one things to do, as I'm sure you can appreciate. Uh, I know how Malky wants the training ground to be run, how the sessions need to be run. Um, so he, he can, you know, on match up when we, uh, we talked about um, the, the rituals. I think we, we've been doing this now for so nearly six years. I know within a minute to 30 seconds what needs to be done on match day. So with the warm up, we're coming in, the players are coming, they sit down, the gaffer's nowhere to be seen, he's in there. So, guys, four minutes eyes on, do your pads up, have your last wee, three minutes, 90 seconds, done. Everyone stop, eyes on, give the gaffer a knock, gaffer they're ready for you. So it's, I know the way Malky wants his uh, football club run and the training ground. And, and it's, it's, it's uh, going, especially going to a new club, it's, if you're going there without any of that help, it's, it's <laughs> so much to do anyway, without worrying about things that he, he can delegate. There's the tweaking things and uh, the way that you work. Um, we were fortunate that there's there's some people here that are um, that are doers. They just get things done. I was delighted that when I arrived here that there's four or five people that just you ask them, I need that done. They just get it done, and that's terrific. Um, and you know, there's no there's no wholesale changes needed in terms of the, the, you know, the environment of what fundamentally need is needed. You know, I'm only demanding things from Jonathan from minute one. It was tweaking things to the way that I work, we work, and I feel is beneficial over years of working under managers um, and then working for managers and then going and visiting coaches and speaking to top managers as to how they work during the week and tweaking it to the way that we work. Um, just constantly trying to improve things so that, again, as I say, people come into the training ground and as a day, they know how the place is, is run. Um, I'm a bit o OCD as far as that's concerned in terms of uh, how the place looks, the ambience of it, how clean it is and tidy it is, the, what's up on boards, um, fundamentally how the day runs and how everybody knows where they should be at what time, um, probably a bit of as far as that's concerned. But I want everybody to be um, very clear as to how I want things done um, and then just let them go on with their jobs. And David's been key to that over period of years, as is Richard. Yeah. Do you work together on team selection and, and possibly bringing in players? I, I, I work together with, with all the coaches on that. David yeah. and me will discuss the team constantly uh, and stand and discuss players every day. John Trace, what you do, you, it's what you guys would do as well. You're standing too, you're standing there at the side of a pitch watching a training session. You know, you just uh, you start going, what, what about he looks sharp today? Or, I should have him today. What do you think of playing him today? It's, it's just what it's what you do. It's what you guys would do as well. Um, so myself, David, um, and I'm very inclusive as far as my coaches are concerned with Eric, um, Graham, and, and Mike, and I get a round table discussion in private. I want to hear all their thoughts. I want to hear everything they've got to say on what they think that week should happen. I don't want it to be uh, a fear factor of the not able to speak. Once we go, then it's one one singer, one song. But in there, anything can go, and, and they can completely disagree with me. Absolutely, fund it. No, no, you're wrong. He said that bags of times over the last six years, and he's just still hanging in there, managing to <laughs> stay in the job. <laughs> but no, you're, I think you're wrong there, and I'm good with that because I don't want yes men around me, and, and I'm sure that you wouldn't want that as well, manager. Do you think we've got enough pace in, in defence, uh, particularly a centre-back? Uh, th that's something that's always key. If you can get a centre-back who is quick, who is tall, strong, aggressive, head balls, kick balls, um, and be comfortable in the ball, usually playing the World Cup. So it's to try to get the best you can get um, with the best attributes you can get, and it's always trying to tweak and 
Uh, pace, is, pace is the thing that everybody wants all over the pitch. Um, what I said to you, what I want is I want athletes. I want, I want people that, are, that can be athletic. Um, you then, if you can get quicker and quicker and quicker players, um, they're the ones that end up with the high level. A bit more of a general question, I guess. Mm -hmm. How hard would it be, how hard is it being out of work as a football manager? And um, what sort of things have you been doing to sort of keep your eye in in the meantime before you took the Wigan job? Mm -hmm. Um, yep, yeah, it's it's not easy. It's, it's um, you know it's like uh, anyone yourself. You're, you're all of a sudden you're sacked. You're out of work and you're not working. It's it's something that's uh, it's not particularly pleasant. It really isn't. Um, but it's about making sure that you've got good people around about you. Um, as far as keeping yourself alert and, and making sure that you keep learning, um, it's going to games. Keep that they're going to games. Keep going to championship games uh, and, and Premier League games every week. Um, in touch with your football colleagues, and you know, David's one that we talked regularly through that period. Um, going and visiting people, uh, the three or four terrific meetings with, with people. I did um, a, a real good couple of hours with Alex Ferguson and Graham Taylor, um, to, to name but two. Um, and going and going and having a look at other sports as well. Going and have a look at um, people from other businesses that you can go into and, and learn about. I did. I did that to, to three different sports. I went into three different sports and went into a, um, you know, they're there. Went in to speak to people like that. Um, and I've been abroad as well. I went abroad to, to a, a football club as well to go and watch them work for a week because I was very interested in how the coach worked. So I went and did that as well. So a balance of all that along with um, going and making sure I picked up the kids for school and went and get the way striking. And, was one of the other sports that you went to see rugby league? Uh, no, no. Sorry, I had to ask. No, 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 no. I, I get that, <laughs> and it's uh, funny because uh, a, a friend of mine, um, Jonathan Davis, um, when we were down in Wales, um, did suggest to come up here and and, and come in. Uh, he, he said he would arrange for me to come up and come in at one of the clubs up here and come in and speak to him at some point, which will still happen. Even more so now that I'm actually here. Um, but uh, no, I, I've, I've, uh, the rugby union, obviously, from, from the last couple of years, have been is, is quite prominent down there. That was one of the sports that I, I went in and spoke to. Okay, Sam. I know it looks at the short-term target of getting up that bottom <coughs> three, uh, but what's the realistic expectation for this season? Where do you see us? Climb as high as possible. Come May. Just climb as high as possible. Keep going. Um, win as many games as we can and keep climbing the table. Um, that's that's the, the key to it. Um, I'm, I'm here to make sure that we try and win and we try and win as many as we can. Um, a little, get a little bit of momentum going. And again, all of you know this division as well as the Premier League, and um, you know that two or three wins in the bounce, and all of a sudden the team jumps up eight places in this division, and it's. Uh, that brings confidence, brings momentum, um, and uh, lifts doom and gloom around every club that it happens at. So it's about making sure that we try and um, we try and climb as high as possible in this division as long as what we can. I know we're looking to finish in the next five or so minutes. Do you want to have a quick, quick fire question round? Anything, anything, you, anything, anything you want. Crack on. Anything. One, one or two questions. One or two word answers. I have a question. <laughs> What are your plans for Manor Figueroa? Does he have a future at the club beyond January? Um, at the moment, he's uh, may not played them at the weekend. Um, so up till January, um, he'll absolutely be part of it. Um, in January, we will review um, his future. We'll review where I think um, we need to be strong at the football club with the investment we're going to be able to have in terms of uh, the wages we'll be able to have for players that are available to us in January. So it's a balancing act. Um, that he's part of that balancing act because um, we have to be financially prudent with what we do going forward as well for the club to be sustainable. And I'm I'm absolutely on board with that. I realise that. So um, value for money for what you have is something that will come into every decision we make. And he's made us part of that. But he's a terrific kid to be fair. Him. Go on. Can you see many people, uh, many players leaving in January? Can I see many leaving in January? Mm -hmm. um, I 
suppose the, the, there'll be there'll be players that will have to leave because um, they're not getting games. The other the other ones really, um, as far as players that are, that are in my first team, um, certainly not through my own will to to want to let them go. I don't think Jonathan wants that either. Um, question somebody always asks me to ask whoever the manager is, um, and the question is basically why do we play two up front? But let me ask it a different way. What's What's your view on strike partnerships? Are they, are they dead? No, people, no, people no, would like to see not. two up front. I think absolutely not. They're not dead, but it's got to be the right combination. As simple as that. Got to be the right combination. If you get two real strong players for I don't mean strong in terms of strength, two strong players for that area there, then absolutely. If I feel that that's not going to be strong enough, um, and I've got we've got players that I think are going to be better for the team, but they're not two centre forwards, then they'll play. But no, I'm, I'm please don't think that I'm anti playing. <laughs> Is it likely to happen anytime soon? Say it again. Is it likely to happen anytime soon? It might, it might, but it's it's a, it's got it's got to be based on whether they're, they're performing. If they look as if they're performing and training, fair enough. If they don't, then it'll be whatever I've got that I think is is going to be there. Um, you know, I, I remember the, you know, the times where you get good, great combinations in centre forwards. Um, we had it um, at Watford. I had Danny Graham and Marvin Sardell at Watford too. We were terrific together uh, as a strike partnership, and we ended up bringing Troy Deeney. I bought Troy Deeney from Walsall, who's turned into a terrific centre forward. Hopefully not at the weekend, but. Um, <laughs> So I did it there, absolutely. Um, and at, at Cardiff at times there was there was Nicky Mina and Hyder Helgus that played together. So it's it's making sure it's sorry to say play two up front but um, they've got to be able to handle it. Um, Roger Espinosa, we've mm. heard all sorts well, of conflicting stories in the media mm. about him being unsettled, he's being settled. Mm. Can you just clear that up and what is his future? Sure. 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 Um, I think that's a let's wait and see what happens in January. Roger's part of the first team at the moment. He's, he's absolutely part of everything that's going on at the moment. Um, whether uh, the, the balance between Roger's family life is, is going to be back in America or not is maybe something that's, that's up for uh, discussion. But he's a terrific kid and a really well-rounded lad. I've had a good conversation with him too already. And up to that point, he's absolutely going to be involved. Don't worry about that because he's um, what we've noticed already is his, his professionalism, his commitment, and his, his ability to run about a lot. Uh, and but but to want to want to work hard is terrific. During the last few seasons, we've uh, recruited lots of players from Scotland, and we've ended up with quite a large contingent. Is that an area? That you'd be looking to recruit. Of them. course, I'm yeah. Scottish. <laughs> <laughs> uh, if if we can get players that are good enough, um, I really don't care where they come from. I really don't. Um, if if I think that they can handle the championship, um, I'll take a League of Nations. I really don't. I don't mind one bit. Um, and nowadays, you have to start looking outside the box. Because if you don't, then you're paying 11, 12 million pounds for a centre forward from the Championship, which is incredible. Really. Scottish market is a little bit cheaper than the English one, though, isn't it? It is, but they, if you, you know, looking up there at the moment, the, it's been diluted slightly uh, in terms of the the, um, the lack of investment that's been in, in terms of the, the media deals up in Scotland. So um, there's a lot of younger boys coming through. Um, again, it's a balancing act of can they handle um, division down here? And to their testament, a lot of them can, which is which is great. You look at the something just pinged in my head because we signed a young lad from uh, up there this summer, didn't we? Um, um, Taylor Sinclair, I believe his name yeah. is, and he's, he's, yeah. he's been totally off the radar. Is he well, he's been injured since I've been here. He? I, uh -huh. Aaron's been injured, so unfortunately, he's been injured. So um, I, you know, I can't comment on him at the moment. I, I do know who he was, and you know, up in, up in Scotland. But there's always um, one or two gems. You, you, again. To say there's nothing in a, a market is is uh, lazy. You you go up there and you, but again, um, the targets that you, you go for and who you who you try and find, you usually find that um, there's an awful lot of other people looking at them as well. But we will we will absolutely we'll, we'll, we'll have our, our scouting team, um, which we're um, restructuring at the moment our recruitment department, um, 
is fundamental to the, the club going forward. Absolutely fundamental. Recruitment department is fundamental, and it means that we try and um, lessen the risk of someone coming in that we don't think is good enough. So they are, they are really important to the football club going forward, and um, the scouts are alongside that, going and watching kids. Uh, Thomas Rogner has been quoted as saying he's going to be leaving in January. So, will he be leaving? Well, if he's been quoted as saying that, then he's leaving. Mm. Okay. I guess we've got to finish up on But uh, to, 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 to kind of add to that, somebody's got to want him. Mm. If he's got to leave, somebody's got to want him. So, um, we'll see. I guess I've got to ask you this. What are your big plans? You don't have to. You don't have to. <laughs> <laughs> That's why you really don't have to. There's a minute to go. I'll ask you really quickly then. What are your big plans to win us the FA Cup back? <laughs> well, I'm going to play centre forward and he's going to play right back. <laughs> uh, finally, just on uh, Sean Maloney. I know that media starts up, you know, getting towards January that he off to uh, America and stuff like that. Is he somebody where is, where is he going? America apparently, it, apparently okay. um, yeah. if you believe him from the read. Is he someone Is he someone that you know is integral to the team and that you want to build a team around going forward? Um, he's a terrific player. Sean's a terrific player and he showed a great attitude in the first couple of weeks since I've come in. Um, real intelligent footballer as well. And and I know the talent he's got. Um, the unfortunate thing is Sean's got a contract in the season, so that makes him um, a, an interesting target for people in the summer, absolutely, um, but, but in January as well, where people think that they can, they can uh, come in and pick him off for, um, and, and make it a cheap deal for somebody with his real quality attached to him. Um, you know, we would love him to stay here to the end of the season, uh, and unless something um, you know, substantial happens in January, um, to allow him to leave the football club, um, then Sean will be here till the end of the season and work hard. And he's the type that will give his everything for the club without a doubt. I don't have a, a doubt that um, you know if it's just the end of the season, then, then he's going to be working hard for us. A fair comment. What about yeah. beyond the end of the season, though? Well, it's difficult because you, you, when you talk about footballers moving between clubs, you have to. There's three parties involved. You have to have a willing buyer, a willing seller, and, and a willing player. And then you can make an agreement. Uh, and similarly, when, when you've got a player who's out of contract, you need a player that's willing to stay and a club that's willing to retain his services. So they're always difficult to predict these things, and and they can change week to week. Um, and footballers, you know, deal week to week as well. They don't think too far in advance because they don't know what's going to happen in the future. So it's always really difficult to predict. Um, we'd like to keep. All I can say is we will intend to keep our best players that we can here at the football club. But as always, we'll only do that within our uh, our budgets because it would be crazy to do to do otherwise. Um, and, uh, and we have to make sure that our, our costs are aligned with our income, unfortunately, and, and that's the way it goes. But um, we'll do our utmost to, to make sure that the best players are, are, are here um, for the long term, and that includes Sean Malone. Cool. Good. Yes. Thanks very much for coming in. I appreciate it. I know sometimes time wise this is not the best time, but really appreciate you coming in at this time for us. Thank you very much. Thank you. Keep supporting you. Cheers.